Hello and welcome to Polygus calibration training video. Here, I am going to show you how to calibrate Polygus carbon scanner series. I am going to use the Carbon XL for this purpose. Keep in mind that the calibration process is the same for all types of carbon scanners. Before I start with calibration, I will go through some of the terms that will be used throughout this video. The, the first one is field of view. To put it simply, the field of view is the open observable area the camera can see. This means anything between Z near and Z far planes and the area within the red lines is all observable areas for the scanner. What I'm demonstrating here is how to set the field of view before calibration. Firstly, angle the scanner such that the pattern is being projected on the top of the table. Then, place the object in front of the scanner. Mark the Z near, center depth of focus, and the Z far planes for reference according to the size of the object. In this case, I have used tapes. Please note that anything between the nearest and the farthest tape is your field of view. So make sure to have the object that you are going to scan are within the field of view. Before I start setting the field of view using the cameras, I make sure that the pattern being projected is sharp by using the zoom and focus adjustment wheel on the projector. I also make sure to set the exposure value to 16. If you take a closer look at the camera, you should be able to see a pair of knobs that can be tied or loosened in order to adjust the aperture or focus of the lens. Loosen the knob to adjust the aperture of the lens using the adjustment wheel. Use the live video feedback of the camera to adjust the aperture correctly. Anything red in the live video feedback is overexposed, and anything blue means it is underexposed. Adjust the aperture such that you are able to see the projector pattern with no red or blue patches. I loosen the screw on the camera mounting plate so that I can slide the camera along the rail. Adjust the camera position such that the intersecting point of the red crosshairs is pointing to the center of the projector pattern. The angle of the camera can also be adjusted by loosening the screw on the camera mount. Now, I loosen the knob to adjust the focus of the lens using the adjustment wheel. Adjust the focus such that the projector pattern appears to be sharp in the camera view. You can also use the adjustment wheel to change the angle of the rail. Fine-tune the position of the camera such that the red crosshairs are pointing towards the center of the projector pattern. Repeat the same for the other camera. When I am done setting the field of view, the setup would look similar to this. With both the cameras pointing towards the center of the projector pattern, while roughly maintaining an equal approximate distance from the projector lens. Make sure to tighten all the adjustment wheels and screws before calibration. Here, I am starting with the middle section of the Z near plane. Place your calibration board as far as you can to one side while ensuring both cameras still see the full checkered pattern. Then, take a shot by clicking on Capture. While doing this, there is a chance that the checker pattern is not completely visible through both the cameras. If this occurs while trying to capture, the colored zigzag line on the pattern will not be visible. Delete and capture after repositioning the calibration board, such that the pattern is visible through both the cameras. Next, move the calibration board towards the other side in steps. Take a shot at each step. We recommend at least two columns overlap of the checkered pattern between the steps. This is to ensure that there are no gaps in the calibration data that will affect the scan data. Once you reach the other side, angle the calibration board to fill in the Z depth. For the Z near and Z far plane, you want to pivot near the corner of the calibration board towards the center, such that the calibration board is still within the 3D space which we are considering for the calibration. For the mid plane, pivot in the middle of the calibration board. Once at position, take a shot. Make sure not to angle the calibration board such that the checker pattern is not visible through the cameras. In this case, adjust the angle and recapture. Make your way back towards the starting side taking shots along the way.
Once you reach back to the starting position, angle the calibration board the other way and make your way to the other end while taking shots. If I were to calibrate at this point, then the calibration result should look like this. Here, it is clearly shown that the middle of the Z near plane has been covered. Now, I continue by calibrating the top section of the Z near plane. After placing the calibration board back to the starting position, angle your scanner so that the calibration board is positioned at the top of the camera view. Go as far up as you can, ensuring both cameras can still see the top edge of the checker pattern. Again, continue calibrating by repeating the same side to side movement as before. After fully completing the top of the Z near plane, it is possible to see the difference in coverage as shown here. Continue by calibrating the bottom section of the Z near plane. After placing the calibration board back to the starting position, angle your scanner so that the calibration board is positioned at the bottom of the camera view. Go as far down as you can, ensuring both cameras can still see the bottom edge of the checker pattern. Again, continue calibrating by repeating the same side to side movement as before. Here, it shows that the calibration for the Z near plane has been completed. After completing the calibration of the Z near plane, it is now time to calibrate the center depth of focus. I change the angle of the scanner such that the checker pattern is in the middle of the camera's view and continue with the calibration. As mentioned before, make sure to pivot in the middle of the calibration board while calibrating the center depth of focus. I continue by calibrating the top and bottom sections of the center depth of focus. As we progress, you can see that the coverage gets more dense especially around the corners. You must also be able to notice the difference in coverage after calibrating the top and bottom sections of the center depth of focus. Similarly, I continue by calibrating the Z far plane so that I get the maximum coverage possible. After calibrating all the planes, I click on calibrate so that I can see the final coverage. It is common to take some time to complete the entire calibration process. At the end of the calibration, it is possible to see that I have achieved a coverage of 90.8%, which is good enough to get the best scan data possible.